Maps reveal the world around us. They also reveal how we see the world and how our interpretation of what we see changes over time. The art of cartography is shaped by the limits of particular land masses. It is also shaped by the limits of human knowledge and the limitlessness of human ambition. In the video today, a list of maps that were startlingly inaccurate, either due to the cartographer's lack of imagination or by someone's deliberate design. In some cases, despite their inaccuracy, these maps have heralded moments of socio-cultural change. All cultures have always believed that the map they valorize is real and true and objective and transparent, says Jerry Broughton, a professor of Renaissance studies at Queen Mary University of London. Sometimes those cultures, though, are terribly, terribly wrong. Number 10. Christopher Columbus's Map of a Sea Trade Route to India Every American school child learns the rhyme, In 1492, Columbus sailed the ocean blue. Sometimes, though, the same school children are given misleading information about how well-informed Christopher Columbus was or wasn't about the ocean he was sailing. Unlike members of the contemporary Flat Earth Society, the Genovese sailor, like most 15th century sailors, was sure the Earth was round. The myth that Columbus proved the Earth wasn't flat was perpetuated by 19th century writers. He just wasn't sure of the circumference of the globe. Florentine physician Paolo de Pozzo Toscanelli suggested in his correspondence with Columbus that China was 5,000 miles west of Portugal. Based on Toscanelli's calculation, Columbus wrongly determined that Japan was 3,000 miles west of the Canary Islands. This is only a quarter of the actual distance. When he landed, he believed Haiti was Japan and Cuba was China. He called the natives he met Indians because he believed he had reached India. Based on his reading of his own map, Columbus never believed he had reached a new land. Number 9. Apple Maps's Diaoyu Senkaku Islands In 2012, Apple ended its partnership with Google. Specifically, Apple iPhone users were previously using Google Maps when they searched for unfamiliar locations. The iPhone 5 was the first to use Apple Maps instead of Google Maps. Mistakes on a digital map can affect consumers worldwide. When Apple released Apple Maps, it portrayed several areas incorrectly. Apple Maps missed capital cities, shifted towns, and in one case created a new airport. Most notably, it settled a territory dispute. There is an island chain in the East China Sea that's controlled by Japan and claimed by China. The Japanese called the island Senkaku, the Chinese call it Diaoyu. When iPhone 5 users pulled up Apple Maps, they found two islands chains, one for each country. One Japanese blogger asked, is this a message from Apple that we civilians must not get engaged in a pointless dispute? Number 8. The Little Man in the Map's Oddly Shaped Hat American school children are often taught to identify Minnesota, Iowa, Missouri, Arkansas, and Louisiana by looking for the little man in the map. Minnesota forms the man's oddly shaped hat, Iowa forms his face, Missouri and Arkansas respectively form his coat and pants, Louisiana forms his boots. Included in the man's hat, Minnesota, is the northwest angle of Lake of the Woods, Minnesota, the northernmost point in the contiguous United States. The reason the little man in the map's hat is so oddly shaped is because the first cartographer to draw the territory that later became Minnesota had never actually seen the land. Botanist John Mitchell first drew the territory in 1755 when he was commissioned to draw a map demarcating British and French territories. Since Mitchell, who wasn't a professional cartographer that never visited the area, he based his drawing on the accounts of governors and explorers who had visited. As a result, Mitchell's representation of Lake of the Woods was rounder and smaller than the area itself. This caused difficulty during post-revolution war treaty negotiations. The British and the Americans wanted to use the Lake of the Woods as their northern borderline. Unfortunately, the northernmost point of the lake wasn't as clearly demarcated as Mitchell's map led officials to believe. Minnesota still has an awkward nub of land on the northwestern point of the lake since the Americans originally refused to give up that land, which was granted to them in the treaty. Mitchell's representation of Minnesota wasn't officially corrected until 1820. Number 7. Benjamin Morrill's Islands Benjamin Morrill was an American sealboat captain and explorer. In his 1832 book, A Narrative of Four Voyages, Morrill claimed to have discovered several islands in the choppy waters of the Weddell Sea, including New South Greenland near Antarctica and Byers Island and Morrill Island northwest of Hawaii. These islands were included on maps 
throughout the 19th century. As it turns out, however, Morrill was a fraud in the 20th century. Explorers proved Morrill's Island didn't exist. In 1910, the international dateline was redrawn on all maps as it had previously diverted around two of Morrill's non-existent islands. Number 6. Gerardus Mercator's Africa versus the Peters Projection Flemish cartographer Gerardus Mercador's 1569 map was an ideal navigation tool for sailors. The meridians and parallels were drawn as straight lines that cross at right angles, making navigation simpler. Mercator also prioritized the lands that would be most important to 16th century European sailors. Since he originally made globes, Mercator struggled with creating the correct dimensions for a map. He stretched the northern and southern extremities in order to fill out the gaps when he flattened his globe. This distortion makes Mercator's map, which is still used for most schools, one where Africa appears smaller than Canada, Russia, the United States, and Europe. While Mercator's choice was pragmatic, it had political and cultural implications. On the map, a continent where people of color comprise the majority of the population is dwarfed by countries with predominantly white populations, even though Africa is bigger than all of them. To counter this narrative, public schools in Boston, Massachusetts have advocated that the 1973 Peters projection, where land masses are presented as their actual size, should be used as a teaching tool. Number 5. The Sun Newspaper's Map of the Middle East Many of the countries in the Middle East were not naturally formed by people who shared a national identity and a set of political and cultural values. The name Middle East itself is Eurocentric as it divides the globe using the perspective of a European taking a trade route to Asia. Instead of forming naturally, the countries of the Middle East were formed by Europeans making trade agreements that benefited their own countries. In 1916, the sykes picot Agreement created the countries of Syria, Iraq, Lebanon, and Palestine as British and French protectorates. When the Allies divided and claimed the territories of the Ottoman Empire after World War I, they restructured former fiefdoms into nations. The 15 million residents of the Ottoman Empire had been subjects, not citizens. People who were now living in close proximity didn't necessarily share a national identity. European intervention has created a lot of tension in the Middle East. The British tabloid the Sun, however, changed the geography of the Middle East simply by printing a faulty map. On this map, Syria had annexed Kurdistan, while Iraq had annexed Israel, the Palestinian territories, Jordan, and parts of Syria and Lebanon. Number 4. The Soviet Union's Cold War Maps Before the Soviet Union collapsed in 1991, Soviet leader Mikhail Gorbachev admitted the country had declared accurate maps classified information since Joseph Stalin's rise to power in 1922. On the orders of the KGB, cartographers really located rivers and lakes, blurred boundaries, and removed landmarks, such as KGB headquarters, from all public maps. Gorbachev ordered the release of accurate maps in 1988 as part of an effort to show the international community that the Soviet Union was committed to transparency. Before the waning of the Cold War, the most accurate maps of the Soviet Union belonged to America's Central Intelligence Agency. Number 3. Nicaragua Expands Its Boundaries Using Google Maps In 2010, Eden Antanasio Pastora Gomez, who was then Nicaragua as Minister of Development of the Rio San Juan Basin, invaded Isla Calero, a nearly two-mile island that has protected environmental status because it's a wetland ecological reserve. Pastora's act was an invasion because the wetlands belonged to Costa Rica. Pastora knew that. A Costa Rican flag was planted on the land, and Pastora replaced it with a Nicaraguan flag. When Costa Rica's government formally complained to Nicaragua's government, saying Pastora could not claim the land for his country, Nicaragua's president, Jose Daniel Ortega Saavedra, had a prompt answer. Pastora didn't need to claim the island because it already belonged to Nicaragua. Saavedra said his claim was verified by an impartial authority, Google Maps. That year, Google Maps had accidentally placed the Nicaraguan boundary one and a half miles into Costa Rica. Saavedra said that based on the boundary lines drawn by Google Maps, Isla Calero was Nicaraguan territory. Both countries then sent troops to the island. Google Maps publicly refuted Saavedra's claim. In 2015, the International Court of Justice ruled in Costa Rica's favor. In 2016, the court agreed with her claim that Nicaragua should pay Costa Rica $6 million in damages. Unfortunately, the court has no powers of enforcement. In 2018, Nicaragua paid $378,890 to Costa Rica. Costa Rica accepted the sum and the compromise. Number 2. The Hunt Lennox Globe The phrase, here there be monsters, is ubiquitous in pop culture. It is the name of an Apple podcast, a short film, and a series of mods in the highly acclaimed video game The Elder Scrolls V Skyrim. The story or myth behind the phrase is that 16th century cartographers wrote, here there be monsters over unknown territory. Enduring as the phrase has become, the myth isn't accurate. Actually, the phrase written over unknown territories was, here there be dragons, and it only appeared on one globe. 
Globe. The Hunt Lennox Globe, which is currently kept in the Rare Books Division of the New York Public Library, is a 5-inch engraved copper globe that was designed circa 1510. The warning is engraved in an abbreviated form of Latin across the southeast coast of Asia. There are etchings of ships and sea monsters on the globe, but no dragons have been found in any uncharted territories so far. Number 1. The Mountains of Kong From 1798 until 1891, any map of West Africa would have included an east-west mountain range stretching from the Gulf of Guinea to the Niger River. Any explorers who crossed the Mountains of Kong marveled at the lofty, barren, snowy mountain tops. The mountain range was anything from 2000 500 to 14,000 feet tall. The mountains were either blue granite peaks or blue limestone terraces. They transfixed anyone who saw them, except no one ever did. Scottish explorer Mungo Park claimed he discovered the mountain range in 1798. Afterward, many explorers claimed to have found the mountains of Kong and even crossed them. When French explorer Louis Gustave Binga surveyed the Niger River between 1887 and 1889, he officially declared the mountains of Kong non existent. By 1891, they no longer appeared on world maps. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe. Brand new videos just like this every day of the week. For more from me, why not check out another channel I do called Geographics. It's a geography based channel. If you like this video, you're sure to love that as well. So check it out. Link below. Do subscribe and thank you for watching.